Welcome to Cardano Over Coffee. Please remember to join us live Monday through Friday on Twitter Spaces, 1.30 p.m. UTC, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're joined by Vanessa Harris to talk about Kajera. Kajera is a decentralized ecosystem for protocols. Builders and Web3 users who are seeking sustainable fintech. Don't forget, we'll be in Denver, Colorado, August 24th through the 26th at the Rare Evo cross-chain event. Get your tickets now at rareevo.io. Crypto is accepted. Use discount code COC10 for 10% off your tickets. Grab that coffee and let's learn about Kajera. I'm excited since since a couple of weeks ago that you were supposed to be here. So Yeah, no, all good. And and as we start, I just want to give a shout out to all the Kajira families here. We've got Denny and Max from KujiCast. Uh, good to have you here. Sergeant Kuji, Zero, Captain Sparrow, uh, Narwhal. Um, I see a few more folks. If I've missed you, just, you know, um, put a heart, say hi. Uh, it's, it's great to be talking about all things Kajira on the Cardano over coffee. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, whatever else you'd like to talk about. Happy to be here. Awesome. Yeah, I think we've had, um, <clears throat> I'm curious, actually, if I can, let me go off script here for a minute, um, which Hero will yell at me for, but he's not here. So um, I'm curious what you think about the name Cardano over coffee. And if that was any sort of issue when you were kind of signing up to go on the show, like, hey, why would I speak about Kujira on Cardano over coffee? Was that awkward for you or did it not matter? I was kind of awkward, I'll admit, because I'm like, well, you know, I can talk about Cardano, but I'm not really building anything in particular in the Cardano ecosystem. I mean, I guess I have YouTube videos on it, so maybe that's a thing. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, more interesting, what I could maybe add is perspective from across different chains uh, like Kajira. And, and so the name made me pause a little bit, but that's OK. I mean, I think also, you know, a lot of folks are here for Card- Cardano and that, that's fine, too. Yeah, you know, when we started the show, we wanted to kind of really focus on the on the Cardano um, ecosystem. But I think over the, the months, we've always wanted that cross chain perspective and we're always interested in taking guests from from other chains. Um, but, you know, we've been trying to see if our name is prohibitive of that, because, you know, I really believe uh, and I think many of us do that, that the future is multi chain. So if we spend the next five years only talking about Cardano, that kind of only further insulates us from the innovation that's happening across the board. So um, I really want folks to think of Cardano over coffee as a place that we can discuss anything that's blockchain. Um, so I, I really do appreciate you you know, being willing to come on. And um, for the other Kujira folks, if you want to request speaker and come up and add two cents here or there, uh, don't, don't hesitate to, to request. All right. Well, with that, um, tell us what, what you're doing on Kujira. I know you're doing a lot on, on governance and, and maybe if you could take a step back for us and say and answer, what is Kujira? <laughs> that, that's a great question. So, I mean, I think uh, it has to start with a, a little bit of, of history. Um, so you, you're probably all familiar with, with Terra Luna. Um, and actually, I just saw that looks like they arrested Do Kwan today. So, uh, you know, interesting day today. Um, but I think you know, oh. as much as... You got the alpha, <laughs> Vanessa. That's we've been debating this for like months. So people say he's going to get arrested. People, others say like, oh no, he's really good at running. It's official. He's arrested. It's amazing. <laughs> Although I saw some video, and uh, I don't know if the video is is correct or not, but it does not look like Don Don Quan, unless he had some facial surgery, which you know then it failed because they still got him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but sort of back to back to Kajira. So you know, as much as uh, other folks in the Cardano community are a little bit snippy about the uh, seniorids mechanism for Luna and UST and all of that, clearly that was flawed. That exploded. It's dead. Uh, but uh, one of the things that was extremely impressive to me about the entire ecosystem uh, was the builders that were attracted to to building on Terra, um, and just so many amazing folks building. You know, everything from DeFi applications to uh, you know, retail focused savings accounts to you know, like all sorts of awesome things. Um, and one of the teams that was building on Terra was a team called Kajira. And the, the product that they had at the time was a liquidation engine called Orca. So it was very kind of vertically focused, plugged into the Terra ecosystem. Uh, it was something that performed a particular purpose for that ecosystem. And it was very, very successful. You know, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, had flowed through it in liquidations. And the thing that they brought, which is really unique, was rather than letting the bots front run everyone, uh, they had a system that anyone could bid 
could get cheap assets that were li- liquidated, you know, from 10% off to 30% off. And it was just a, you know, a really human way of, of approaching it. So, I would, you know, I dabbled with it when I was uh, in the terror world. But what really impressed me the most was when all of that collapsed, it wasn't but three or four weeks that the team popped up again and said, okay, you know, we're going to rebuild this thing. We're going to build our own chain, uh, you know, cue the meme with Fender. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they, they uh, started to think about, well, what could we build that was kind of end-to-end good for users, uh, that was kind of within the ethos of um, decentralized finance, that wasn't just uh, people throwing inflating tokens around, that, that actually put people first. And so I think there's two things that most impressed me about Kajira and the suite of tools, and we'll talk about that. Uh, the first of which was how they treated everyone who was the wrecked survivors from Luna. They made them whole. They gave them one-for-one Kuji tokens. Not a lot of projects did this. It was very, very expensive for the team. So one thing I look at for teams is the character of the team. Uh, and, you know, honestly, uh, you know, Dove and, and the folks there displayed tremendous character in how they treated their community. So that's one. And the second thing, I think, is just the direction that they're taking it. So they're building, uh, you know, kind of grown-up DeFi. Uh, they're focusing on real yield, not inflating tokens, and they're building a suite of services that's accessible to you know regular folks all the way on up to advanced traders. And to me, it just resonated so much that how quickly they'd recovered and started to build out this suite of tools. So, what are some of the tools that they have? You know, obviously they've got their uh, liquidation engine. Uh, if you're on Cardano and you're familiar with uh, Indigo, that's uh, very similar to the the stability pools that they have. They're a slightly different take on it, but same kind of concept. Uh, but they've also built out now a a limit order book, uh, decentralized exchange. They've got an um, automated market maker to provide liquidity that they call Bo. Uh, They've also got, uh, you know, the ability to mint their over-collateralized stable coins. So for those in the Cardano ecosystem, very similar to IUSD. So it's over-collateralized by a basket of assets. Um, And all of these, you know, tools that they're building accrue to people who are in their ecosystem. So you get a little bit of the liquidations if you stay Kuji. You get a little bit of the fees on the limit order book stacks. Uh, it's it's something that we may not appreciate here in the decentralized world. It's just how difficult it is to have a limit order book DEX. There's, there's not very many. Uh, you know, Cardano has Muesli Swap as, as one, but they're few and far between. And that's definitely the way pro traders do it. So yeah, I could talk on and on about, uh, you know, Kajira and the work that they're doing. They're, they're bringing uh, money market to the Kajira chain as well. Uh, something else that's also worth realizing is that for those who aren't familiar with Cosmos, a Cosmos is an ecosystem of sovereign L1 chains. And Kajira is one of those sovereign L1 chains, but it's connected to the entire liquidity of the cosmos. So if you're familiar with Atom, Atom is the, the cosmos hub, the token of the cosmos hub, or Osmosis, which is one of the you know premier um, automated market maker DEXs that are on cosmos. All of that can easily be transferred back and forth. I know in Cardano, we're not so used to transferring tokens to other networks, but in cosmos, it's just kind of a thing that we do. So I'll kind of pause there. I know that's a lot to throw at everyone all at once. That's That was beautifully... Packed together, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, go ahead, Epoch, sorry. Yeah, I don't think I realized that, Co- I guess, um, what is the tagline for Cosmos? Is it like the blockchain of blockchains? or? Oh, I don't know, I don't if, know. They, if they have a tagline. If they do, it's not in my brain. Uh, but the, the, <laughs> the, I'd say there's a couple standout features from Cosmos. Uh, one is it's one of the the first Byzantine fault tolerance proof of stake networks that was out there based on uh, work that Jay Kwan and, and Ethan I forget his last name uh, some of the research that they did. Um, but but two it's it's kind of a suite of SDKs that anyone can build a, a sovereign chain on. So it's very different than what we'd experience here in Cardano, and it's all underpinning through something called IBC. Uh, which is the inter-blockchain communications protocol that essentially allows tokens to seamlessly bridge across any Cosmos chain. Um, and so it's it's almost like they've taken uh, bridging, pared it down to its its base component, and made it a capability that every Cosmos chain just has by default. And it's one of the most tested and robust and, and kind of tried and true bridges that are out there. I mean, it's been in operation, gosh, almost seven years now. Uh, so it's, it's definitely something that's been battle tested. That's awesome. Um, I didn't realize a lot. I didn't know a lot about that. Um, is Cosmos one of the chains that you're kind of uh, not to make this trade talk, but is that one of your DCA chains? 
<laughs> so so it is, but maybe I'll sort of step back. You know, one, like, don't listen to anyone on Twitter and what they say about what to invest in. You'll get wrecked. Uh, bad idea. <laughs> but but two, I, I, Block I Jock, did you hear that? You might need to say that one more time for him. Uh, <laughs> no, hold on. This time. No, no, no. Don't, don't blow up my fantasy. Come on. What's the matter with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Vanessa. Uh, but I think there's there's three kind of large theses that you could have on on blockchains. You know, thesis number one, which is embodied by Ethereum and their L2s, is kind of a fat protocol thesis where value accrues to the protocol and scaling is done through L2s. Uh, thesis number two is you know high transaction per second uh, protocol that really handles everything. Solana's one of them. And thesis number three is kind of the app chain thesis, which is where Cosmos lives, uh, which says that you'll have purpose built chains to handle different aspects. And what's really important is that those chains can communicate, they can do asynchronous uh, composability between those chains. They're working on synchronous composability, not quite there yet, but you can do kind of that level of uh, kind of creating a constellation of chains rather than a single chain with scaling layers. And I really think that has the potential to stand alongside uh, an Ethereum as an example. And you'll see that chains like Avalanche are kind of going down the same path as um, as Cosmos uh, with their subnets. Uh, Polkadot, where I'm not a huge fan of the way they've done their rented model for their parachains, but it's also you can squint and say, okay, that's also a constellation of chains that can communicate together. Um, so yeah, it's one of the one of the uh, coins that I DCA. I think they the 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 thesis there also is they've released something called interchain security, uh, which allows uh, new chains to leverage the economic security of Cosmos. So as you're familiar in proof of stake, a lot of the security comes from, you know, what's your market cap? How easy is it for an attacker to buy up all the tokens and uh, essentially conduct a 51% attack? Or on, on Cosmos, it's because it's BFT, it's more a 33% attack, but same, same kind of a concept. Uh, and so by leveraging that economic security of the core chain, uh, it, it, it helps uh, kind of the entire ecosystem. I'm going to pause. Black Chuck, you've got a question. Yeah, so for somebody that went to Ethereum in the beginning before they found Cardano and got a really bad taste in their mouth and felt like they were in the worst bank in the world on some island where <laughs> there was no access to any other bank and everybody just had to pay it. Uh, and it made no sense to me at that point, and I almost gave up on it because I'm like, what are you guys talking about? This is ridiculous. Uh, it, when I compare, when I came over to Cardano, I realized, first off, that I had complete sovereignty of my tokens. I, I, unless I decide to give them up, put them into a smart contract, uh, and what have you, uh, I am in complete possession of my of my tokens here, which includes my native assets. And as long as I use the ledger or treasure, I'm good. Um, is Cosmos similar in that regard? Because this is the problem that I have with other chains. And I've gotten to the point where I just stopped researching them because I just didn't, it had nothing that Cardano offered as far as me being in full control of my finances, which is exactly what decentralized finance is supposed to be. So is, does Cosmos facilitate that in the same way that Cardano is, or is it a little different? You know, I'd love to hear your, your uh, thoughts on that. Yeah, so I think that there's, there's uh, some ways where I think it goes beyond Cardano and some ways where it's not quite the same. Uh, so let's talk first where I think Cosmos is superior. Uh, because of this model of sovereign app chains, not only does your, your token kind of belong to you, uh, but also the entire blockchain has its own set of validators. Uh, which are in control of that blockchain. So for example, using Kajera, there's a set of validators on Kajera, which are different from the Cosmos Hub, different from Osmosis. So if the folks on Osmosis decided to go crazy and do something, then... Um... Okay, um, go ahead and uh, <laughs> we'll remove that person really quick. Apparently they have uh, the inability to wait for their turn. <laughs> go ahead, sorry. Vanessa. I'll listen to this I mean, I guess there are TikTok, so uh, TikTok stuff, this TikTok. Okay, okay, Vanessa. Third one uh, is a charm. <laughs> yeah, I, I removed him. You know, you give him a chance. You give him a chance, and sometimes they just can't control themselves. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so I think in terms of sovereignty, uh, having your own sovereign blockchain it is superior to just you know if you if you look at uh, World Mobile Token on Cardano, they're currently dependent on the set of validators or stake pools on Cardano for, for all of their security. And that's not the case on Cosmos. You can choose to have your own set. So that's where I say Cosmos is superior, but also it's it's kind of inferior to, to one of the models in Cardano. Um, so one thing I do really love about Cardano is the liquid staking model that's kind of built in at the protocol level. Um, and so you uh, have full control of your tokens, but when you stake them, they're still kind of in your wallet and you can move them around at any time without an unbonding period. 
Uh, Cosmos does this differently. It, uh, most chains have a 21-day unbonding period, and you are actually kind of giving up control over your tokens to, uh, you know, to a smart contract in order to complete that experience of staking. Uh, there's a lot of uh, liquid stake derivatives that are on Cosmos that seek to kind of mitigate the concern of having an unbonding period, uh, but it does aid in governance. And so we're having a lot of conversations in Cardano with Voltaire about how does governance work and how do we ensure that people aren't voting twice and people aren't able to economically attack the governance by borrowing. Uh, and the, the unbonding period for Cosmos effectively makes it prohibitively expensive to execute a government governance attack because you'd have to borrow whatever you're borrowing for 21 days and stake them and lock it up. Um, so that's a, a, you know, I, I guess a plus side to the, 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 to the governance period. side, right? Okay. Yeah, to the, see to the governance one. side. But you could look at it and say, well, okay, Cardano is superior because liquid staking is built in at the protocol level. 21 days is the unbonding period. That's, you know, three weeks. We watched the rise and fall of Luna in three weeks. You know, that's like an, is that not an insane amount of time? Uh, yeah. And it, the thing about it is I think 21 days is a reasonable if you have a consistent behavior of a blockchain, which it sounds like Cosmos has been doing this for a minute. And so they have consistency of behavior, which then means that you can depend on it. Right. So 21 days for me is not that big of a deal. But as long as after that 21 days, I am, you know, full vested and I'm in complete control of, of my assets, I'm good. You know, well, that sounds great. To well, hold on. I, let's make sure we're not confusing correct here if i'm wrong vanessa but when you say the unbonding period is 21 it's not like you pay those it's not like you're locking it for 21 and then you can withdraw whenever it's locked until you start the unbonding period then you wait 21 days then you can have access to your tokens correct exactly and so in your example of of terra luna collapsing uh, there were a lot of people myself included with the tokens stuck staked Oh, you, yeah, that you could do nothing with. So you couldn't unbond them. You you were just kind of uh, along for the ride. Can you cancel uh, an unbonding? Can you like, can question. I say I, I want to unbond that. and then like one week later be like, you know what? I changed my mind. Like I want to, I want to stay bonded. Is that possible? I don't actually know. I've never tried that. <laughs> I'm pretty conservative. I'll, you know, bond what I'm going to bond and, and, and keep it staked. And what I don't want uh, to be staked, I'll just keep unstaked. Well, you, you can you tell can. that to my my AVAX balance. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, isn't that the most annoying thing? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, yeah, Avalanche. I have. A, we could we could a whole, have a whole show on Avalanche. I used to run a, a node there. Um, I have since pulled back. Uh, but yeah, that's a whole other topic. So, with the group that you're talking about now, and obviously that, in essence, it sounds like a layer two to me that they will be able to in essence, create what Cosmos doesn't allow, right? Which, because if I'm in a smart contract, I've made that decision, I've done it before. It is what it is with liquidity pool and farming on Cardano, that just has to happen. Uh, but with a lending and borrowing protocol, there is a way to get the loan, set collateral, and then allow that staking to still be happening with a, a stake, single stake pool operator, which we absolutely love over here, like Epoch or Hero or Lido. Uh, and at the same time, we can then start to pay off that particular loan with the staking rewards, you know, and you got to monitor, make sure you don't get liquidated, obviously, and things of that nature. But, you know, thus, you know, the reason that you're in DeFi and you're taking control of your assets. So is that something that is possible within what you're talking about with this new project that you're, I, I'm sorry, I forgot the name right now. It's yeah, I mean, I just couldn't, it would not come to me as I'm talking. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I, I know kind of how being, uh, you know, live, uh, the brain starts to melt away. Uh, so the project is Kajira. I did want to correct uh, slightly one thing you said. It's technically not an L2. So Cosmos doesn't work on the L1, L2 model. Uh, it's not, Kajira is not subservient or even dependent on the Cosmos hub in any way. Uh, the only kind of dependency comes in through the uh, uh, IBC, which is the blockchain connection, which you can think of as an L0 that allows that communication between chains. So uh, that, that's kind of one aspect to it. Kajira is completely sovereign. If the Cosmos Hub disappeared tomorrow, Kajira would continue. Um, it wouldn't have an issue with that. Um, now, as far as you know, pay, sort of self-paying loans, uh, if you were using a liquid stake derivative, as collateral for USK. USK is the stable coin that's uh, on Kajira. Uh, something like ST Atom. So ST Atom, you would uh, basically, uh, they, they do the uh, staking for you, uh, and then the token itself is liquid and it compounds over time. So at day zero, 
uh, one atom is equal to one st atom uh, over time, uh, one atom is going to equal uh, less than one st atom because st atom has accrued that value. Uh, so in a sense, yes, you could get the same thing, just the mechanism is slightly different and you have a dependency, kind of a risk of the smart contract for the liquid, liquid staking provider in that case. And if I can just jump in for a second here, um, to introduce myself, I'm Amit. I'm one of the actually the core team developers here at Kujira. Um, oh, awesome, Amit. Glad you jumped up. Yep. I think this is actually the first space I've ever spoken in. So that's cool. Um, Thanks for coming up. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, man. Absolutely love that you joined us. Thank you. Um, but I know you were talking about a uh, lending market, and so that's actually what I've been working on in the Kajira team for the last couple of weeks, months. Um, so basically, um, what's really cool is that we can, since we have control of like the base L1 here, we can add modules to the blockchain itself that allow us to do a lot of extra things. So, for example, what we already have is something like an Oracle module, which, you know, I mean, Oracle attacks are quite common on various protocols. Um, but having the, the module built into the blockchain gives you the security of, you know, that base level proof of stake for your entire Oracle feed. And that's something pretty underrated because now you can have basically all these protocols that don't have the expertise of like, you know, building their own Oracle or like Oracle risks that happen. I'm sure many of you have heard of attacks from Oracle price ma manipulations and whatnot. That's like mitigated because we have a built-in Oracle module. Um, so another module that, you know, okay, I'm going to be speculating, maybe dropping a little bit of alpha here, but we've been thinking about utilizing the interchain accounts a uh, module on Cosmos, which basically allows you to control other accounts, other wallets on other blockchains that are connected to Cosmos IBC, um, basically a bridge of some sort, and use that connection to, you know, create some kind of liquid staking derivative. And that is cool because we can have automatic loan repayments. Like you said, um, you can have a liquid staking derivative that you borrow a loan against and as that derivative uh, accrues value so in the form of staking rewards you can repay that loan so suppose i have like a loan of like 10 atom and um sorry a loan backed by a collateral of 10 atom and as that atom you know accrues its staking rewards i don't remember what the atom staking value is right now something like 10 or 12 percent that means that in a year, you're not going to have to pay as much because you, you've been repaying your loan all, all the time. So, I mean, there's some really cool things you can do. You can um, integrate a lot of stuff into that base chain layer. So, I'm not so, sure. Yeah, quick question. Yeah, quick yeah, question. Go, go ahead. Go ahead um, so, you said 10, 12%. You know, the way that we have things set up on Cardano, there's somewhat of a diminishing, a diminishing reward over time. Um, so is that 10, 12 percent also diminishing over time? And if so, what's that rate of diminishing? Sure. So I'm not as knowledgeable about the specific tokenomics of other Cosmos blockchains. So, for example, Atom is the Cosmos hub um, token, right? And they have some parameters set in the blockchain itself for, you know, inflation and where these rewards come from, validator block rewards, and so on and so forth. Um, so I imagine that those things are generally quite static, changing with governance. And, you know, the 10 to 12%, I think, is also dependent on the price of Atom at that time. So if Atom yeah, I can pumps... comment a little bit on, yeah, yeah, on this, Amit. Um, so the, the current rate right now, just looking at my wallet, is uh, 23%. Uh, but the rate actually depends on how, what percentage of Atom is staked. So I think they have a target of roughly 66% of all Atom is staked. And if more than that is staked, then the rate lowers slightly. So it can go down. I think it's been 
you know, 10, 12% in the past. And if less than that is staked, then the rate goes up to encourage people to stake. It is an inflating token. So it's an, an entire purpose is to help the economic security of the chain through those rewards. Um, but by staking, actually, because there's a difference in inflation, inflation is lower than the staking rate, you're effectively coming out ahead. Yep. Um, well said. Yeah. So, and just to, just to reiterate, you know, this is using the staking rewards of other blockchains, not on Kajira, bringing those staking rewards over to Kajira and then using that for DeFi on Kajira. So, you know, having that kind of utility built into the chain itself is something we can do as, as Cosmos L1 devs. And that is, that is very interesting. I think the amount of different use cases that interchain accounts, for example, not just for staking rewards, you can facilitate interchain transfers from Kajira on other chains because, you know, people control the same accounts on other chains, you know, same address, but with a different, slightly different derivation path and whatnot. I don't want to get too technical, but there's, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do as that, you know, as I'm saying again, again, but with these uh, built-in core modules on the on the Cosmos L1. So, yeah. That's, that's, that's interesting. I, the security nerd in me uh, has a little bit of a heart palpitation just thinking of, you know, bridges and like how you're going to secure those connections and like what attack vectors get opened up by being able to control different accounts. Um, I know we could probably spend another 30 minutes talking about that, um, but that is interesting. Um I mean, I can give you a that. one minute crash course on, I mean, you know how bridge bridge risk is, is real. It's scary. I mean, I, I don't like holding bridged assets on any chain, but um, what we're talking about here is Cosmos IBC, which is uh, something that stands for inter-blockchain communication. And it's not exactly the same bridge that you'd see from other, other blockchains like Wormhole, Layer Zero and whatnot. Well, what it let's is. do this. Let's do this a minute because um, mm -hmm. I know we have more hands and we're officially in banter time. So I want to sure, get sure, sure. More, more folks up here to, to chit chat. Um, but let me do my own research on mm -hmm. um, uh, on this ecosystem. And I'd love to have you back and Vanessa back and anyone else uh, to talk more. Uh, and let's let's go to Blue Chip, Blue Chimps. Uh, do you have a question for our guests? Yeah, yeah, we're going to be blue chips at some point, but uh, at the moment we're still blue chips. Thank you, thank you, book. Uh, yeah, I just had a, a question for you guys because uh, you mentioned that you're going to be like your own chain. You're, you're, you're basically your own chain, right? So, kind of, what is the security of your chain, and like, what does it take to be a validator on Kajira? And or is that is that not needed? Do you guys just take all your security from Cosmos uh, validators? Yeah, just curious how that exactly works. Yeah, so right now um, there's 75 validators in the active set on Kajira. Uh, and so really all you need to, to be a validator is to have enough uh, stake to you that you are part of the active set uh, and to you know not get slashed a bunch of times and, and put in jail, essentially. Um, so there, there is kind of an economic path to becoming a validator uh, on Kajira. Uh, and did you say what, how much the, the staking, uh, yeah, what, what was the requirements in terms of staking? Uh, let me take a look at changes. You just need to be uh, in the active set, which is the top 75 uh, validators. Um, How many validators are there total? So there are there are 75 total. So I think that the model that it is very no, different I didn't mean from... There's, there's inactive validators, right, that aren't in the active set, that are still connected oh, to the network? 100%, yeah. I don't actually know that, that number. Maybe Amit knows. What does it take to be a validator? Is it just staking? Or I'm assuming there's some sort of hardware requirements as well. Yeah, so in terms of hardware requirements, it's, it's somewhere I'm not as familiar with some of these technical details. Um, it is it's probably higher than what Cardano requires, just given the, the TPS of the chain. Um, okay, yeah, awesome. Yeah, thanks. I'll probably have to do my own research as well, do a bit like Epoch and not take up the space asking things I could do. Yeah, no, all good. Out. <laughs> and, and maybe if we, we can bring some other folks from the Kajira team up at some other, other time. They'll have a little more technical knowledge. I'm very much just above the technical layer. So I understand things to a point. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> sorry. We get more, more Kajira people coming up. This is exciting. <laughs> 
block jock did you have you had your hand up is there a question or it was it was really kind of roll back to what Amet uh was saying having to do with the borrowing and lending and just how that plays out now obviously if you're in control of your own assets that you have to watch out in case the value does go down but imagine if the value goes up at the same time you've got the loan that particular thing is paying off the loan faster because of its value. And you literally pay off the loan in such a short period of time, which is exactly what the banks don't want you to do in traditional finance. They just want to extract liquidity from you the whole time. So these things, that we absolutely need them. Uh, and I am so excited in what Amit was talking about and look forward to. And I'm going to do a little bit more research into this project in Cosmos as a whole. So thank you, Matt. Go ahead, Blue Chip. Uh, yeah, just I guess another question, more on like the uh, yeah on the protocol and DAP side. Is that well, are there any like uh, applications that you guys have already building on Kajira or that you have like lined up that you can share about that maybe yeah people would be interested in, in taking a look at? Yeah, to, to build on that, what's your what's the like the app that's going to bring everyone to the chain? You know how they always criticize Cardano for like not having that breakout application that everyone's going to use so we'll apply the same metric <laughs> what's the breakout application that's going to make a billion you know <laughs> I, I think that's fair so i think you know i'll address this question in two ways one is what the team themselves are, are building and, and why i think that's compelling and then two i'll point to some of the compelling products that are being built on it right now um, so the first is uh, you know if you look at a uh, DeFi suite They'll, they'll have one of the most complete DeFi suites out there from, uh, you know, money markets to other collateralized stable coins, uh, limit order books, AMM decks you can provide liquidity to, just the, the complete package of DeFi will be there. Uh, so if you're interested in DeFi, like that's a thing that w that could attract people. Obviously, not everyone is at the level of expertise to be able to take advantage of all of those things. Um, and so there are apps that are built on top of it. My favorite app so far is an app called Calculated Finance. Uh, it's the easiest way to dollar cost average into crypto. Uh, and they're just getting ready to release their kind of new version, version which they're calling DCA+. Plus. Uh, basically, it allows you to dollar cost average into any of the coins that are available in the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, so that, that includes Atom, it includes Kuji, it includes any of the bridged assets. So there is Ethereum that's bridged over these other types of assets as well. And you can set, you know, a fairly... Uh, intricate set of parameters if you want. So you start the DCA when it reaches a certain price, you stop when it reaches a certain price, you've got all the you know daily, weekly, monthly. Um, and then with DCA Plus, they're bringing some back-tested um, AI-based uh, learning to help juice the DCA that you've got. So you'll still be DCAing just based on the price and a bunch of other indexes. They'll either put more or less into your DCA and it's showing a roughly 20% improvement. Obviously, you know, back-testing is not forward-testing. And so, you know, it is what it is there. Sounds a little bit like what Genius is uh, going to be bringing forward, but of course they haven't launched yet. So, yeah, this is this is live. DCA is live. Uh, DCA Plus is supposed to come next week for the whitelist. So I'm super excited about that. Yeah, that'd be great. I know previously I had to use a bunch of like bots and stuff to like manage a you know a DCA portfolio. So it's nice to hear there's some solutions that are more usable these days. Um, hey but, but Vanessa, great. could we get could we get something pinned to the top having to do with the project and what have you? So for those of us who are not sitting at a computer right now, I can do this research. So I'd love to get a, a link for that. And Nils, I know you have your hand up for a while, so I definitely want to let you speak your piece here, my friend. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, Cardano over coffee. And Vanessa, really um, awesome to have you on this space talking about Kajera. It's really interesting. I followed your Twitter feed for a while, and it's always always a crazy time and, and really fun. So, <laughs> fun to Thank see. Um, I'm curious to know. I, I, I've very briefly dabbled into Cosmos, really not too much, but I did see recently that they have something going on for an incentivized test net for interchain NFTs. And I know it seems like you guys are more in the fintech area and DeFi space, but I'm curious to know: uh, Have you? Um, drawn your attention to the NFT space and, and, and have you thought about uh, engaging with it in any meaningful way? Um, and, uh, and I'm also curious to know what's the largest meme coin on the Cosmos ecosystem. <laughs> well, the, the, the largest meme coin is definitely Luna Classic, which currently has a market cap of 780 million or, or thereabouts. <laughs> uh, there is a dog coin. I don't know how to pronounce it. Hui Hui. Uh, it's pretty small right now, but that's, I guess, the, the uh, actual meme. Uh, How do you spell it? H-U-A-H-U-A. -H -U -A. Um, 
H U H A. Okay, I probably need to get some now. <laughs> I have, hey, I have items. I, I definitely gotta look into all this stuff. Uh, I'm just listening right now. I'm just fascinated um, having this conversation for sure. It's like yeah, I, I got into Cosmos just like about three years ago, and I'm like super conservative. Like I get stuff, I sit them there. I'm not like you're like into like DeFi. You trade a lot, and I, I love looking at your stuff because I learn a lot from you. I'm more like, I sit it there. If, if it means something later, it means something later. I can only focus on like one thing at a time, you know, kind of thing. So this is just amazing. I love this conversation. Epoch, Epoch just <laughs> not on us. Come on, Jenny. Jeez. You're doing this this whole time. You're an expert. <laughs> you have been talking about it. Let's go. No, I told you guys, this is how I do it. I get some and I just put it there. If I like what I see, and I see future, I just like put something there and I add a little bit. I just don't think about it much, right? I just, as long as I'm not so, putting my life there, <laughs> I don't have to tend it. I love you know? about you, Jenny. I love that strategy because I have, the, to me, I have a very similar strategy of like, you know, the first step should be buying a small amount of something, tracking the project, figuring out what the hell is going on. And not like trying to trade and, and, you know, be a day trader, but like actually just see what happens. And then if in two, three years I'm seeing good stuff, then I come back and I double down, triple down, do more research, get riskier, and then I'll wait in a few more years. Um, so I, I actually follow a very similar approach, but, but like Vanessa, I also love DeFi. Um, so, you know, show me some good DeFi, DeFi economics and, and I'm in. So Epoch, don't buy 10,000 tokens right off the bat and then hope it goes up while it's at the top. Okay, got it. Thank you. No, I do that too. I also like to place a large initial bet. <laughs> um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> just just because like I've been burned before where, you know, I'll take, I'll put like a hundred bucks in something and it'll moon and I'll be like, oh man, why did I not put like 500 bucks? So I, I work hard to like increase my minimum bet and then I try to have very few bets, less than 10 um that way i can keep track of them but you know that's just my own personal personal approach i follow your path sensei i follow your path <laughs> please please no sensei no sifu i am i'm just a black hole nugget um but speaking of nuggets if we can ever set up the the cross chain here i'd love to get uh, the ada nuggets in cosmos so maybe vanessa you can teach me how to how to do that <laughs> I don't actually know if there is a connection between Cardano and Cosmos. Um, I know that the World Mobile Token folks are looking to build their own kind of sovereign chain on Cosmos and connect it somehow. I'm not sure if their bridge will actually work generically or not. So that's a huge topic. Um, so I've been talking to a few people about helping them run Earth nodes um, just because we're an infrastructure company and we build blockchain infrastructure. And I was shocked to see the documentation and it was basically like, get set up in cosmos <laughs> and like get all this stuff going and i was like what the fuck is this i was like i thought this was a cardano uh infrastructure so um did y'all hear about that in the cosmos ecosystem like the world mobile token like is that a brand that's known about or is that being tracked at all is it a joke well, i'm curious you know what attitude there is around that <laughs> uh how spicy do i want to be well, let's just say there's some people in other ecosystems that may view Cardano as a joke. I, I'm obviously not one of them because I'm here. <laughs> uh, but I think generally, uh, you know, projects like World Mobile Token don't have a ton of visibility uh, within the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, I think it's it's going to ramp up as they get closer to, to their launch and, uh, you know, more stuff happens. Because uh, I think ultimately uh, sharing liquidity is a good thing. And I think everyone agrees on that. Amen to that. All right. Well, we're in the last, you know, 10, 20 minutes of the show. We're in pure banter time. So thank you, Vanessa, for joining and all the Kujira folks that came up and who listened. Um, you know, we have a link tree on our Twitter profile with a with the scheduler at the top. Um, so you can schedule time to, to come and talk to the Cardano community. Uh, we're obviously getting a little bit more cross chain every day. Um, so we'd welcome kind of, you know, anyone who wants to sign up for a slot. Um, so yeah, thank you. And That's you're always welcome to come here around. to talk governance and you're not going to get yelled at. I can promise you that. <laughs> there was the one time you jumped <laughs> up, I don't know what he was talking about. <laughs> but thank you.
Oh yeah, those are trolls, but definitely nothing to do with that. No, you're. This has been amazing. I have to say, I would love to see you come back and bring some knowledge from the other worlds. <laughs> hey, hey news! I see your, I see your hand up, Vanessa. Um, is there quick, real quick? Is there any spaces that are happening on a regular basis for Cosmos, um, or for uh, Kuchera? that you guys do or, or anything like what we're doing here on Cardano over coffee. I'd just love to know. I should probably know, but I, I, I don't. Um, if you're looking for, for uh, Cosmos, uh, Crypto Cito is a great person to, to follow. Uh, he has a YouTube channel um, and he, he talks a lot about all the projects in, in different uh, aspects for, for Cosmos. Um, Kajira, I know that Cosmos stream every now and again will have um, spaces like this, but I'm not sure if there's a regular schedule for them. Thanks for listening to Cardano Over Coffee. We'd like to thank our guest Vanessa from Team Kajera for dropping some amazing knowledge. We hope to see you all at Rare Evo on August 24th through the 26th in Denver, Colorado. Tickets are on sale now at rareevo.io. Use coupon code COC10 for 10% off. Don't forget to like and subscribe.